Hello, my name is Sam and I'm the CEO here at Cambridge Sustainable Food. Cambridge Sustainable Food works with the Cambridge Food Poverty Alliance, which is over 30 organisations who have come together across the city to address access to healthy and sustainable food. This alliance of organisations decided that it was vitally important that the voices of those people with lived experience were able to be heard, which is how we came to be making this film. I believe passionately that everyone has the right to reach their potential for health and well-being. Current systems of interconnecting power structures drive ill health, poor access to food, climate change and social injustice. Our food system is deeply unjust and will continue to hit marginalised groups hardest. Food poverty is poverty and we need to shift the narrative to one of food justice, the right to food and money in your pocket to be able to afford the essentials, whether that's through earning the living wage or receiving benefits that are fair and fit for purpose. We know that poverty and access to food affects groups such as ethnic minorities, the LGBTQ communities and those with complex health issues more adversely than others and any conversation about food and health needs to consider issues of social and economic injustice. I'm Liam, I'm a GP registrar here in Cambridge and I'm a health inequalities consultant at Cambridge City Food Bank. So when we look at what makes people healthy and well, we see that food plays a fundamental role. That means that lack of access to food and in particular to healthy food can have a huge negative impact on a person's health and well-being. So evidence is emerging that lower food security is linked to a range of chronic diseases, such as obesity, high blood pressure, strokes and even cancer and evidence is also beginning to demonstrate how food insecurity is associated with poor mental health with some work suggesting it's associated with a 250 percent increase in the risk of anxiety and depression it's therefore my opinion that one of the best things that we can do for health is to promote access to healthy nutritious food for all of the people here in our community it's the stress of not being able to solve your own problems that is really yeah, that's really puts people under, I think. The times in my life when I've been poorest, I've eaten the most takeaway. I've eaten the most crappy food. It, it, it doesn't make sense, but it just is. Because you stress by and you stress eat. And then you've got the shame involved of having wasted 25 pounds on two pizzas instead of going to the shop to buy the ingredients for two pizzas. But the, the real fact is, if you've got actually nothing, it's cheaper to buy pre-made food. So there's all these maths that you, and this, all this kind of working out that you're supposed to do while stressed, while hungry, while emotionally, you know, irregular. Like, that's hard to do. I wouldn't expect anyone to do it. It was really hard to queue up for food. My son is 14 years old at the time. He must have been 11 or 12. And I was out here queuing for food as a, what, 37, 38-year-old man at the time. That was really hard and really exposing and a couple of times, to be honest, I came to the queue, saw someone I knew and turned around and walked away. Where I am now is, you know, helping out, working here, talking to Sarah about taking over, managing the food hub, like that's growth, that's beautiful things. But I still have to queue up once a week. Of course, it will always affect your mental health because you feel like you've failed slightly if you can't afford to get the food you want, um, be able to go to the shop and get the things that you want to buy. My physical health, it has affected my physical health because being a diabetic, if I don't eat properly, then I could become ill and I, I, I recognise that. So if I'm eating rubbish food, like something that's really cheap and that, it's got a lot of fat in and it will affect me being a diabetic. That will affect my mental health as well. I decided after the pandemic had finished that I wanted to give back a bit. So I started to volunteer and now, I've become the fair bike manager here and I'm really pleased. Coming here just made me feel a lot, lot better. My health is a lot better. I'm actually losing weight, would you believe? <laughs> Coming here, you get a lot of fresh vegetables and, and I usually find that if I don't eat them properly, I feel a bit uneasy, you know, because you've not got enough vegetables in your system. My life has picked up and I feel a lot better now. My mental health is very, very good now. And, you know, it wasn't for the people here. I wouldn't be here today. Not being able to afford food is a really difficult situation to be in. It's just constant stress and worry and anxiety and it really does affect my mental health because I'm constantly worrying about it and thinking about if I pay this bill then it means that I haven't got much money to pay out for food 
and of course the food prices are going up a lot. When I first started coming, it was hard to get past the fact that this didn't mean that I was a failure because I needed that extra help. It's helped me from a practical point of view. So I've been able to come and get foods that I wouldn't otherwise be able to afford, or it's meant it's freed up money to buy other things that I need that I can't get here. Up until a couple of months ago, I wasn't able to work. And that was what threw me into food poverty. It is difficult not to be able to afford food and only being able to afford bad stuff, fried stuff, battered stuff. And because I'm chronically ill, I had to give up my job. So that makes it harder. And yeah, it's not good, especially when you've got a child to feed. It is a struggle not knowing whether you're going to be able to feed your child or feed yourself. It's not nice having to keep asking people for things. Coming here, I got to meet a lot of people in the same boat. It makes you feel less alone, less useless, I guess, because there's other parents here that are having the same problems. It needs to be addressed better by governments as well as local authorities, local communities. Local communities need to do more to help each other than what they do. All our money goes on bills and food. You're lucky if you've got 20 pence to rub together at the end of it all to feed anyone else other than yourself and your family. The price of food needs to be addressed tougher by the governments and be tougher on these shops to help the communities to help themselves. It just means that there's a lot of decisions to be made all the time. So, for example, we have somebody that goes into hospital quite regularly. It's a question of, can I afford a taxi to get there in extreme discomfort and pain? Because if I do, we're going to be really short of food and where am I going to get food from for the rest of the month? One of the reasons that a lot of people here are in food poverty is because of ill health, mental ill health or physical ill health sometimes generational issues, quite a few chronic illnesses and then some really serious illnesses like terminal cancers that really throw people's finances off. There are people who just cannot work because of chronic ill health. We also have people that do work but are not earning enough to, to, to have a decent standard of living. So volunteering here has given me a real insight into how it is for people who are finding food very unaffordable, particularly since the cost of living crisis started. And I myself in a situation where I often feel that my own bills, and my own food situation is something which I need to be careful about. It's the help in more than just food. It's the way they help my mental health. Can't do much for me physically, I'm afraid, which is a pity, but mentally it's made my life easier. I can cope. I'll get some fresh vegetables, which I couldn't afford to buy in the shop. Not with electricity, gas and water and the rest on it. In fact, I'm not sure I'd even be here if it weren't for this. I think I'd have given up. But they've changed my attitude which means I now do more for myself than I was before. It hurts not being able to go and get what I want from the shop. And that really knocked me to six, my confidence. My mental health is a hell of a lot better. I don't sit there at home now, which I was before, occasionally bursting into tears with frustration. Now I don't get like that. So they've done, well, more for me mentally than any hospital or doctor's ever done. Without being able to come here, I wouldn't be able to eat the stuff that everyday people go in the shop and buy that gives them all the nutrients and the rest on it. I couldn't do that. I've had multiple heart attacks, multiple strokes. If I don't eat the right stuff, I go down quite quick. Because now I can get fresh vegetables. It's made a big difference to my health. I'm healthier now than I was before. It's made a difference to me having quality food and just having some cheap old beans out of a tin. At least here I can have some fresh stuff. There is no food equality. If you haven't got plenty of money, you've only got the, the rubbish, really, the poor stuff, which is not fair, I don't think. So we're trying to address two things at the community living room. The first thing is food poverty, 
and the second thing is about loneliness and community. Some of the people we have, it's the only opportunity for them to get fresh food. Certain types of food they just can't afford to buy. Often we have found that these are the only conversations people are having in the week. The only time they're meeting people is by coming here, and having a cup of tea and then getting food on top of that. Still there's a tale of Covid here where people, if you're going through certain types of treatments, are very reluctant to come out to crowded settings and so we've been trying to facilitate food to get to those people who are in their homes. I'm so happy so many people felt able to tell us about their experience. I'd like to thank all of those that took part in this film. As we move forward from pandemic to cost of living and into an uncertain financial future, we cannot allow the issue of people going hungry in our city to go unnoticed and unaddressed.